weapon of the Okay, uh, of the so I would prefer tank, not to do this, but as I mute this for a second, we're going to go over yesterday's game because it was absolutely horrific and there's a lot of things that need to be fixed as I up the quality for you guys. So first off, as those of you who are participating are aware, this game did not go particularly well. This is a game that probably should have been won, however, through the culmination of multiple mistakes by multiple players, uh, we did end up losing this game. So this is going to be kind, not a replay cast, so this is not from the actual replay file, but from the OBS recording that I took during the actual match. So you're going to hear the live comms, and you're going to be watching it mostly from my perspective. Now, unfortunately, this does mean that in this case, I'm not going to be able to glance around and look at everyone else's hit point bars, but it does mean we're going to get a nice large mini map to work with, and I can uh, start and stop the replay as I wish, unlike the rather buggy replay system on World of Warships, which tends to crash whenever you pause it or change the speed. So I'm going to turn the volume back on and get this started. The destroyer just like disintegrate the tiger in a couple's like rounds. Yeah, so, it, well, so just banter at the no, beginning of the match. The pretty irrelevant, gonna go to 1.5 times speed. So we're not uh, deploying cap strategy. No. We're going to cap all the caps at the same time. Are we? So we initially deploy one of the Kremlins up around here, along with Stalingrad. Uh, myself and a destroyer, and I believe the Wooster are deployed down here, and then one Daring and the Des Moines park over here. Uh, which way do I want to point my guns? Left or right? Yeah. Eh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. I'm just going to quickly go to 2 times speed here, just to show you that nothing really happens in the beginning of the match. I could, of course, skip because it is on YouTube. Yeah, we'll see. Worcester Daring. Oh, it's actually pretty good. You can see the ship slowly drifting into position. How many Aegis Gunners do I want to do? Looking at the, looking at the uh, two various matches. That's where I'd go. Otherwise, it's just open water. Well, I mean, that's also where I'd go if I had a Des Moines. Just saying. I'd go right about here. Stop and wait. Right, you're gonna try Canada, but it doesn't close. Aha, uh -huh, it's down on this side. Mm hmm, so first no, we pop right. up, we see a Stalingrad, gonna switch no, 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 the speed back to normal. No, 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 I'm good, I'm good. So, we, the first ship we spot as a team is a Stalingrad. Our daring is inside of B cap, trying to cap it. He's positioned well enough so he can disengage if he wants to. We see a Stalingrad pop up. Now, if he continues on to this side, then that means all four of these ships could potentially fire onto him. If he drifts onto this side, then all four of these ships could fire on him. Now, the Moyne is still squeaking into cover, so he's not realistically going to be able to fire on any ships in that position since he's a Des Moines and he's unarmored, so he's going to need to get into cover. So we'll see what evolves yeah. from here. Like Cleveland Brown, he falls out of a fucking bathtub. Do you need intel radar? <laughs> there, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be radar any second. I don't know why they haven't done it already. And so we yeah. ask for radar from the Des Moines at B. However, the Des Moines only has a 10 kilometer radar, so that's about two squares. So one square is here, one square is here. So it stretches out to about 80% of the cap right now. So his cap radius covers that. So unless there's a destroyer basically in this blind spot over here, in which case I would be spotted and uh, also the booster would be spotted, there's absolutely nothing to see with this radar here. It doesn't even cover the entirety of the cap from the Des Moines position, he's not a Russian cruiser, it doesn't even extend beyond it, so there's absolutely no way anything could be inside the radar. If anyone's yeah, here. Alright, see if they can shoot me in the next... I need to see if I can get away with in the next six. Come Stalingrad on, come electing on. not to radar. Yeah, Daring does pop up. I still haven't been to Daring. So. Mm, I'm guessing. Let me see. This must be on the edge of the Des Moines radar, if anything. Clever's probably spotted from firing. Oh no, he's already just firing. 
All right, so this is not either of them calling the radar at all. I was just trying to figure out the ranges here. So the two enemy destroyers pop up as Chief Kim takes a Russian radar, probably the Stalingrad or Moskva, not sure which. Both of them are inside the inside um, of his range in terms of radar. So he gets lit up, so the two enemy destroyers open fire. Help, help, help. Oh, yes. what the so you can see that really? firing. Oh, there are seven okay. ships shooting me. Oh, so at this point, based on everyone here and all the people targeting Chief Kim, we know almost immediately that there's no one here. So at this point, this Kremlin needs to position. I need to reposition. This Wooster needs to reposition. The Daring can go through and take the cap. That's fine. Stalingrad should probably begin adjusting his angle, and Kremlin is going to need to prepare to be a little more cautious Same up in the north. Everything They're all here. They're all here. That's fine. What yeah. the fuck was that? 5.8 So Yerf can go like all the way so over here. So they do try and contest the cap, yeah. but they take a bit yeah. too long getting into one position to get guns onto the target, so Chief Kim does manage to take the shit, cap and so scrape bad. out. Run. Tell him you're not I'm safe, I'm safe, I'm safe. So at this point they're fairly contained, and Daring should be quite out. Des Moines is just a radar bot here, he can't really fire. Sorry, gonna pause because I don't want to talk over the comms. Des Moines is secluded here. Kremlin can't really fire. Stalingrad is making a turn. That's fine. Wooster is continuing down. That's fine. You can see here that one of the Stalingrads did end up deploying onto our side. So he can't immediately disengage. We're gonna have to deal with him first. However, all right, I'm gonna start the uh, my inferno. Uh, Stalingrad. This Stalin's, I think this Stalin's trying to block the cap. Down here, fine. Yeah. As we know, this no stock right down here is coming side. in yeah, for what is actually it. going to end Unless up being a barbecue. Yeah. one versus four engagement. Yeah, I just saw our teams calm down there. So safe. this is just a free kill at this yeah, point. We've secured B. He's actually actively suicide to go on this side. He's already dead. We have control of B uh, with radar as well if they attempt to contest. Now the Des Moines fired off his radar, so it's on cooldown. Wooster's not quite in range, but I cover most of the cap, and I can quite safely advance forward to about this position in order to cover the entire cap. If I advance there, the only ships that can shoot me are this Stalingrad and potentially the Smolensk, and potentially the Moskva if he also advances, but it's a fairly safe position. Neither of the battleships can currently access me. Of course, you know we only see one of them at this time, but it's a fairly well protected position so at this point we're just being fed a free stalingrad while our ships should be repositioning so this kremlin back here has reversed that's fine it does take its guns offline but it's a safer way to readjust your angle it should probably pop back out around here after fully reversing to hold this angle so we can create the crossfire with the kremlins now we control b so we're not fighting for it so the point is just to keep the ships outside of the cap. Now currently on this side our blind spot is this corner, so as long as this battleship makes sure he can fire this corner since the Des Moines is not currently in a position where he can fire and the Stalingrad is not currently in a position he can fire, we'll eventually be alright. They're not pressuring right now however, so we have some time to get into position. Dead pretty much. In the meantime we're going uh, to work on the just make sure we have Booster firing safely from cover when you're done. Daring taking the cap. This yeah, guy. I'm gonna go out and see it. About and as you hear, I'm hard spotting Stalin, Brad. As worry. you hear, we do well, instruct the Daring to leave the cap after yeah. and to just provide some he, he has no, he has nowhere to disengage to. He is He's incredibly out in the open. John Cody, does your John Cody, does your radar reach that Stalingrad? Oh shit! No, it doesn't. Uh, all right, never mind. We'll be fine. And it's... also, I have 50 seconds till radar. You two just sit tight. It's fine. So as you can hear. There's a request for radar, but you should know the Des Moines radar only covers 10 km, so that's about t two squares on a minimap. Each square is roughly five kilometers. You can see mine roughly extending out to about two and a half squares with my 12 kilometer, um, 12 kilometer radius. It might actually be closer to 4.5 per square. I'm not quite sure. The scaling is not that precise, but I would say if I was at Des Moines, my circle would extend out to here. So like this, that's what, kind of partially through a square, roughly, rough, it's roughly two squares, more or less. But you guys can just sit right here. Out. Oh, boy. So we should just be repositioning these ships up north. You can just sit there. Daring needs to just get yeah, safe. Yeah, I don't have any options. My preemptive torps worked. 
I don't, they don't have a destroyer. Kremlin like, adjusting his angle individual. now. He's getting a fair bit broadside from this angle, but fortunately their battleships haven't pushed up yet. Until now, we see that first Kremlin has gone all the way far north oh, towards C, so... Mm, uh, U2 is down here. At this point, needs to adjust his angle. Oh, there's a Kleber. I'm getting capital gains. You don't need to go so hard, U2-3. All you have to do is hold this gap, oh, that's right? Fine. All right, so that was my instruction there. So the point of the Kremlin at this point, at, on the southern side at this point, is to hold the crossfire. So the Kremlin has 20 kilometers of range, so you want to just be able to reach any Kremlin sitting up here at sea. But your main objective is to hold this corner. He doesn't need to fire on the Stalingrad for that long, and the Stalingrad is well within his range to control. So he doesn't need to get much closer from this point on. Now we're still working on the Stalingrad. He's close to death now, though. We've been burning him down for a bit. Daring has exited the cap. He's staying outside of the Stalingrad radar. Decent precaution for now, although one could argue that he could just steam straight this way. He might take a couple shots from the Stalingrad, but it's only one person firing, and the Stalingrad has bigger problems right now. Uh, this current trajectory takes him out of the map. We'll see where he steers from there. These guys are still repositioning, that's kind of fine. You might want to accelerate at this point as a Kremlin and come forward out into this position. Daring is alright, you can escape if he needs to. Des Moines again is locked into position. You can kind of fire onto Seacup if he pokes his nose right now, but currently, based on his minimap position, he can't fire on anything. But that's quite alright. We're currently in a repositioning phase still, as we burn down Stalingrad. Yeah. No, I'm actually f giving him a fair bit of broadside, so he could oh, punish me potentially, yeah, this but he's firing yeah. high explosive into the Kremlin, so... Yeah. Yeah. It's fine, U23, it's down to that about 75% oh, at this Kremlin's point, about however. Slap me for about probably 20k. So at this point, I make a comment. You'll note that their Kremlin, who is creating a soft crossfire, not really a crossfire, because his other Kremlin's kind of on the same angle as him, is on a position where he can hit ships... I'm right on the edge of his range, he's at 19.3, his range is 20.7, so he can potentially hit me if I'm not paying attention like this as a cruiser from far away. You can see I'm nice and flat. Fortunately oh, for me, he does miss shooting. the salvo, and at this point I can no correct my feet. angle. It was an error right, though in terms of my position. The corner. So in terms of my own positioning, I was being a bit greedy in order to get all three guns onto the Stalingrad, but if he'd punished me there, he could have punished me for up to 20k, 30k, maybe even 50k if he was lucky. So my position here is a bit too flat, should have already been pointed closer to the angle U23 is taking in order to angle against the potential threats to the north. Oh yeah, he sure is. Oh, he stopped. Well, it's fine. I can shoot his nose until otherwise. So Moscow pokes, so I can shoot him. If Kremlin was a lit little further back where I was, he would be able to shoot him, but right now he can't shoot him, so that's fine. He's just holding, so he can be taking pot shots at the Clever from his current position. But he doesn't want to get too much closer because if Moskva, Moskva is poking kind of flat right now, so he's going to need to adjust his angle, but if he just reverses back out to around here, he'll be able to apply HE pressure with the small lens and potentially the destroyers as well, as well as uh, AP pressure from the two Kremlins in the north. But right now their battleships are positioned fairly poorly. We have one battleship in relatively okay position. This one is about to get into a relatively okay position, just needs to free his gun barrels from being blocked out by the island right now. Yeah. How's Kit gonna look for you guys? Pretty sure they're lining Ooh, themselves. Oh, small lens guy! Are you really gonna shoot over there? So you can see from here, a nice long range cruiser or battleship controlling this position, 21 kilometers of range on the Moskva and or Stalingrad means that I have easy access into the edge of Sea Cap and I can fire on all these things. But that in turn means that any that in turn means that any long range ships can fire back on me, so I need to maintain a careful angle, especially while going bow in like this. You wouldn't. Flat broadside Kremlin? Oh, I'm gonna smoke you up guys this. want me behind them oh, or we'll slow down? So Daring asked for instructions. Where does where do we want him to go? I don't expect him to slow down that quickly. Thank you. Oh, oh he, right out. he doesn't receive any further instructions. Oh, you helped me out though. Fucking, this is so oppressive. Oh, oh my he's God. shattering my fucking mosque for shells? Fucking Kremlin. 
So nothing for me to shoot at right now in terms of priority targets, so I'm just trading with the battleships. Fucking Making some remarks. Small as possible again, switch back oh, to the priority target. Yeah, so I'm angled against God. the two battleships over here, but not angled against anything up here, fortunately. All their heavy cruisers are locked into a rather poor position here. Now Kremlin has the right angle, but it's probably too close, so at this point, he probably already wants to stop in reverse. He's too close already, the small one's going to be farming him. Dead. Oops. Ah, oh, damn. That is bad. Oh, That's another that. shell. Oh, oh, the small ones. Torps in front of you on that small ones took about a quarter. So you can see here, their two battleships are lined up, more or less. This makes it super easy for any battleship or heavy cruiser with armor like me to just angle appropriately against them and bounce all their shells. Now, that this is, of course, because they're only firing from essentially one direction over here. This makes it really easy. That's why we want to move the Kremlin to just about here to create a rough crossfire between the two um, battleships. Now, there's going to be a blind spot for each battleship. For the one in the north, it's going to be this spot. For the one in the south, it's going to be this spot. But in order to create the widest crossfire, you want to be creating a bigger triangle. So as you get closer together, just like how they're really close, you're decreasing the potency of the crossfire because the angle becomes shallower, so it makes it easier for me to um, angle against them. So like you see how these two battleships are more or less on the same angle? They're drawing. I can draw basically a line from them to me. Now imagine this Kremlin pushes all the way up here. The triangle suddenly becomes like that, right? So then one of my angle, if I just hold this angle, my angle against the one battleship that remains down here, is still really good, but then my angle against the battleship that pushes all the way north up here becomes really poor. So as he increases, let's say he pushed all the way up here, you can see the triangle between the two battleships widening, right, on the minimap. That makes it even more difficult for me to angle against the battleship up here, and that is the true power of crossfire. By getting too close together, you decrease the potency of crossfire. Of course, right now we don't actually have crossfire, because I don't think Khan over here can actually shoot this Stalingrad, but... The point is, our triangle is closing, and putting the battleship, in this case U-23 is Kremlin, into this position exposes you to a lot of high explosive pressure. Now we do lose the daring. Looks like he just gets caught up by a radar and fired upon by essentially their entire team. So that's just a lack of caution. So you can spot these cruisers and battleships over here for the team, but these are all Russian, right? So that's this 14-1. Or 14-2, sorry. Stalingrad is, what, 14-5, 14-6? So you don't have to be this close to spot them. Kremlin itself is 14-1 because of some absurd Russian balancing. And these guys you can't spot. So you could actually be spotting these guys from right about here. So a safer spot would be the spot right south of this island. Because that way, when someone pops one of their radars, they do still have three radars left in spite of us having to burn down Stalingrad. You can just push north. Or if you're afraid of not being able to contest the cap, then just sit. Basically, with John Cody, this can function as a dual-purpose thing. One, you can provide him a smoke screen so he can actually poke out and fucking do something instead of sitting behind a rock all day, which is he's which at this point this point he has been doing. He's more or less been locked out of the game because of his squishy hole. So you could be smoking so that between radars you could potentially poke his head through and fire some pot shots. And two, if you're just sitting in front of here with your nose pointed towards John Cody, you can simply accelerate away whenever they pop a radar. And then wait out, wait out the radar, the radar ends, you can reverse back out and do your spotting again. And in between the radars, well, if they're firing on Kremlin, who should be absorbing pressure up here, or Kremlin, who should be absorbing pressure down here, or even myself, I've been taking some small amount of fire from the battleships, as you've noted, then... Uh, well, they're going to light themselves up with their gunfire for them. At this point, of course, the booster needs to be moving. You help me we're going to skip back forward to... The small ones took about a quarter. All right, we're going to skip back forward to the point where the Daring is already dead due to his mistake oh, having caught too many raiders. Khan, you might want to, you know, divest... Yeah, so Khan still pretty worthless. Clyber kind of close to him. No one there to help him because Stalingrad's going around the world. Stalingrad hasn't fired all match yourself from that More position. or less. Stalingrad is bobbing? Just Stalingrad posts, and thanks to my good position, I can relatively punish him. Still holding this corner, watching this corner. No, not sure if U23 can fire from this position, but probably an easier shot if, he, again, he was further back and closer to me. Daring moving north, that's fine. I'm shooting at it. Okay, so U23 can oh, fire oh. in a position where I can fly hard. Stalin just took a gigantic hit. Yeah. I'm sure too much power. 
Yeah. Trying to body reposition. So that's fine. He was safe behind the. You might want to reverse at this point though, because you're yep. getting small inch pressure now. Yep. I'm reversing. I'm reversing. So note all the ships here. They're, remember how I was talking about how when ships are all in one relative angle, it's easy to angle against them. So as a Des Moines player here, you don't want to stay on this back corner forever. Starting there initially is fine, but because you remember there was a Stalingrad here initially, which kept him from pushing up onto our side. But he's been dead for a while, and we know for a fact that none of the ships are in fact on this side, so this side's completely clear. So he can actually push all the way up this um, or down this peninsula, right to the corner, just about to where He's about to be able to fire, but not able to fire. So what you can do here um, is that you can poke with just your front guns. You can do basically what these Stalingrads and Moskvas have been attempting to do, except I've been punishing them every time to do it, right? But note that in terms of my mirror position, the only ship that's mirroring me in terms of my position is a Smolensk, which is not immediately going to be able to delete a Des Moines, and also a Des Moines has better acceleration and deceleration characteristics than the... Russian heavies. So you can stay right here, try to access your two front guns, and you can sit, probably safely get some harassing fire onto this Kremlin. But more importantly, when any of these two Russian cruisers try to do their bow in no spoke, uh, the Des Moines from this position on this map on shards is able to just hammer out high explosive fire onto them and just dissuade them from coming forward. Uh, in his current position, obviously you can see all of his guns are occluded. Maybe if he reverses back out, he gets access to his back gun, but this is an extremely awkward position to stay in. You're a radar bot, but you kind of want to be more than a radar bot in a close game. Moskva also poked. Priya's gonna have all the finally soon. coming into position to do, do something. Kremlin uh, is showing himself. Can, trying to put their broadside, so he needs to adjust his angle. So they, just this, they need all... Just distract them as much as you can. Yeah, because uh, he's adjusting. He's so he can fire now, so he's finally in a position where he can yeah. actually do something. You can just pump AP into their battleship broadsides and dump whatever torps you have. You can see most of the guns are pointed towards UT3. Yeah. No, UT3 at this point has dropped to half from the constant oh, high explosive oh, pressure from the small ones due to being so close. Now he does shatter most of the shells, but fires will eventually dip down. You can see the ship's shifting fire to Kremlin, uh, conning north okay. to try and punish him because he was giving a fair bit of broadside. Not sure what his hit, hit points are looking like right now, I never really look at him, but he can just fix that by angling. He's a heavily armored Russian cruiser. Stalingrad, pretty far away. John Cody pops a radar. Oh no, that's probably old. Yeah, these are old. So Stalingrad's in position to pop a radar, but not much else. You can shoot... He's giving a fair bit of broadside to the other Stalingrad and Moskva, so he does need to be careful. They're both in range. As you can see, easily, based on my range circle, this Moskva and Stalingrad probably easily cover Kremlin and Stalingrad. Fine, we're already at 6.30. We're still so repositioning, that's yeah. fine. Well, not advantage, but cap advantage. Yeah. yeah. Open fire. Uh, you know, you're, about, oof, you're about to finish that with no spell. Oh. I take a yeah, pretty shoot, large uh, chunk there due to some health, shells so lighting onto my nose. Moskva's not invulnerable. You can harass cause... whoever that low ship is, the Stalingrad. You can just try and get a yeah, fire. Still... So Daring has been deployed to try and finish off the Stalingrad over there. Stalingrad, He's yeah. fairly low finish thanks to having right. poked out too aggressively and taking fire from UT3 and I. However, UT3 is in return taking a large mm -hmm. amount of high explosive retribution. You little fucking DDs think I won't shoot you from here? You can see here an important aspect of staying far back in both the battleships and the long range cruisers. I can actually shoot over this mountain range if I'm careful. Now these destroyers are a bit too close for me to really do it, but the important part is I can hit this part of the map up here. So if there's a battleship and or cruiser which shares my long range posting up here inside of C-Cap with me, I can shoot well into that cap to create a crossfire with my other battleship, which is fleeing the battlefield for some reason. So this is bad for several reasons. You're supposed to be one, this battleship is the anchor, given you're on the push side. So being turned away from the fight is fine, but you want to control the distance. Opening it up is fine, but you do want to stay close enough to control the cap. So you need to stay on this side of the map, so north of this line. Uh, Shatter has a... Where's this? Shards. I think this is Shards. Shards has a nice uh, mid-section line, which kind of dictates how you want to play on this relatively symmetrical map. This battleship stays north of this line, this battleship stays south of this line. That's the ideal hold, especially when you have B-Cap already in your hands. Get the oh fuck my off my teammates. Stalin. 
So I'm trying to control the destroyers here, taking what pot shots I can, don't have any other real viable targets. I'm holding the gap in the You can note that their battleships are slowly drifting north. Well, they have to, they don't have a choice. Putting fire onto Kleber. So if this Kremlin at this point was a little further north, now he was under pressure from these two destroyers initially, so he moved off. But if he was up here, he would be creating crossfire on the two battleships, keeping them from pushing in too deep because they don't want to broadside U-2-3. While U-2-3 is at half, uh, a ship, any ship of health is still more than capable of destroy, dealing damage and destroying battleships. So you don't want to push too far, you're ruining the crossfire. The Stalingrad has some control, but relatively speaking, their entire team is angled against him. And since the Stalingrad wants to be deploying armor-piercing fire, he's relatively ineffectual from this position. Now he doesn't want it to get too close, I assume, due to both the small lens crusher and the uh, two destroyers. But this relative position here isn't particularly useful and the angle isn't particularly good. You might want to at least correct the angle and push forward about a square, five kilometers. At this point, the Stalingrad should be firing onto the destroyers, similar to how I am. Ooh, I feel when you miss fucking destroyers. With of course, it is shots. kind of difficult, but this is the priority target in this instance. Okay. Yeah, you can see the battleships are... putting pressure onto UT3 yeah, here, they're uh, trying yeah, to put him down. He was at half last time I looked at him, and he's been taking quite a bit of sustained fire pressure. They no longer really have anything they can... They're pushing into the cap, the battleships are getting off. quite close. As long yeah. as we have angles to shoot on him, I can radar it. Daring wandering a bit far off at this point, he finished Stalingrad off with his high explosive fire. He's trying to stay outside the range of the Moskva. But you remember, Moskva only has... Uh, 12 kilometer radar and 25 up to 30 second radar. Of course, if you mount the module, there's only one radar here. The only ships that can actually shoot at him if he gets radared are the Moskva and maybe the Kremlins. But note that the guns are pointed this way. So as a destroyer player, you should know that you're, you're facing the threat of up to one Moskva. And if you can bait the radar, then you can bait the radar and just leave. The radar doesn't last too long. It won't push you too far out. If the Kleber and Daring were closer, of course, he is under threat of getting hunted down. But they're not there, right? And the small lens, the primary anti-destroyer threat, is far up to the north, can't fire on him, so he can definitely be hovering a bit closer. This is a bit too far, a bit too conservative. As long as you can shoot this angle here, like the, the corner, basically. So as you can see, I'm still trying to preserve the yeah. crossfire. You have IFAG right here. I move yeah. forward a little bit. Oh god, good. In order to try and get better coverage mm -hmm. of the cap, of course, I should note that I already had full Ooh, coverage, so it's not too necessary. Ouch pressuring the clever you can note my angle is getting quite a bit worse so i was well angled against the two battleships when they're up here but as they come up closer to me my angle is quite a bit worse you can see this battleship here definitely can actually easily pen me even if i do present to him my 50 millimeter cheek blades they're shooting at the kremlin yeah. otherwise shoot at the dds stalingrad identifies correctly that shooting, shooting, shooting the bearers no shot on the kremlin is continuing to leave at this point, he should probably just correct and bow in and take his third gun offline, but present a th forward threat for the holding the triangle, essentially. Because even if UT-38 does drop, I can still hold the triangle as a relatively powerful Russian heavy cruiser in terms of creating the crossfire triangle. Wooster hasn't been firing for a while, thanks to his deployment here. He fired on the Stalingrad early on, but thanks to... Well, Wooster being Wooster, he's been kind of left without a home for quite a while. Now, this isn't a particularly punishing lineup. At this point, we've eliminated two of the Russian heavies, so at least just one Moskva and one Smolensk. So with the Wooster's 16.5 kilometers of range, you can actually potentially fire open water if you really want to. We have two radars right now controlling CCAP, myself and John Cody, of course. You'll note that John Cody has been taking some harassing fire, probably from attempting to reverse out and get some fire off of his rear gun. In addition, as the small Smolensk has pushed out to more cover his rear, if he shows even a little bit of... Um, if he peaks even a little bit, the small Smolensk can potentially punish him quite hard. Now, the small Smolensk can't actually penetrate him, even with IFHE, he only gets up to 27 millimeters of penetration. Actually, that's a lie. If the small Smolensk has IFHE, and has an anti-cruiser build, which is pretty good for Clan Wars, I would say, then he can actually pen the 
the Moines 27 millimeter external plating. So this Smolensk is actually quite dangerous to him. So as you can see, as a result, he's taken some amount of damage. Oh, okay, well, there we go. Four as far as pop in front of me. Nice on from Weber. So Shit, I'm obviously opening fire. Okay. Quite yeah, clearly, they yeah, might be torping go. me, however. So I pop my hydro no, fuse I fat finger my radar as well, so I guess I'm He's radar right now. But well, that's yeah. fine, I have a secondary radar Soviet in Soviet. Des Moines. UT's rate does eventually Soviet. drop. So his position now is actually pretty fine. But the problem is, well, he's dead, right? And he's dead because earlier on he was taking probably a little more pressure than he had to. And our Kremlin here, who was here, wasn't absorbing sufficient amounts of pressure. So all the pressure came down this way, even though we easily could have had uh, this other Kremlin up here absorbing pressure, and potentially a Stalingrad as well. You'll know, however, the Stalingrad is basically fucking out of the map, so hes they're not even bothering to fire at him. Their goal is to take B-cap, the Stalingrad's not stopping them from taking B-cap at all, it's just basically myself, u 38 and potentially the Des Moines. Uh, Daring's still wandering around outside of the radar range at this point. A bit too far, as I said, you want to either you want to get behind here and like start harassing, and you can potentially threaten this gap, right? You have to remember how many people can shoot. Like, the Smolensk moved out of C cap, so potentially before, if he'd gone up here and the Smolensk had still been sitting in this cap, he could have been fired upon, but at this point we know the Smolensk has left the cap. The destroyers are still here, Moskva's still here, so he could have just easily gone over here and kept harassing Kremlins with torpedoes from behind, or Moskva from behind. Sure, they're chase torps, so they don't have a high likelihood of landing, but if he pops radar, like, who the fuck is going to shoot you? The Kremlin has to shoot all their turn, all their turrets. They can only shoot you at most of their rare turret. Maybe the Clevers can shoot you if you're on the edge of his range, but that's not very likely, right? So this is too far. Like now, I do know I do note that he received instructions to just screen and scout earlier on, but it's okay to make decisions for yourself. Now, of course, if you make the wrong decision, like first daring over here and you get spotted out by radar, and their entire team opens fire at you because instead of being behind them, you're in front of them, then that's a different story. That's obviously a positional error, but this is also a different kind of positional error where you take too conservative uh, conservative of a line, and you end up being kind of worthless. Get out of the Soviet Union. I served it. There we go. Uh, so all in all, like in a force meet. All in all, this Kremlin was holding the relative right position, just some earlier overaggression and some earlier like weird positioning by the northern team cost us a lot. Wooster moving in concealment all the way north. Pretty that's pretty alright. He knows the relative position of everyone. Kremlin continuing to come down, I don't really understand that move. Like, we already control the south side of the map, so why are you coming down here? You're shielding... Basically, he can now shoot these... I'd say these three ships here, but he can no longer shoot uh, this Moskva, this Daring over here. So you're kind of relieving yourself of your responsibility of being the northern support? battleship, which is not what you want to be doing. <laughs> yep. Like, it actually... it's Sorry to keep pausing, but like, it's actually quite mind-boggling that the northern battleship is still alive and somehow the southern battleship is the first to drop from extensive amounts of pressure when the entirety of the enemy push was focused on the northern side of the map. Now I'm firing on the daring here, attempting to relieve some pressure, push him off. Do you note however I'm a bit tunneled and as I mentioned earlier my angle is starting to become insufficient. I do manage to bounce those shells off here, that's a 2900. So three shells hitting me for 2,900 is just two overpens and one bounce. Oof. Good thing I bounced most of that. Daring's pretty low. Do you have a radar, John Cody? Yes. Can you pop it? So Thank I switched you. to the clever for one salvo since I can't see the daring. Small ones begins to pressure me, so I'm going to start reversing at this point. Daring pops up. I'm pressuring the Smolensk. Worcester almost in a position to do something. At this point, my hydro to catches the torpedoes. Ouch. Mm. So this is my major mistake here, as I mentioned earlier, the battleships were pushing in, I didn't adjust my angle properly, and as a result they do punish me. This is mostly pen damage, you can see from the individual shells that none of these were actually citadels or anything, so I'm lucky enough that I don't get any um, shells plunging in through my 25mm nose into my citadel, but still a heavily punishing amount of damage. I go from, what, take a 30k chunk? Yeah, so I was at 40k after being on fire, dropping down to 17,000, so it's what, 13,000? No, it's 23,000. So I take 23,000 in terms of pen damage over the course of that exchange. I do manage to dodge out the torpedoes because of the daring smoke. and correct my angle. Yeah. At this point, I'm trying to disengage to get my two heals off. Do you have two fine. heals left? You can give it to them for now. My damage control. 
so I'm in an at-risk position. Darren continues to be out of position, oh, unable to do anything. Wooster has not been firing, it's even though most of the fire has been directed like to my side. Like Des, Moines, it's a little bit. Des Moines continues to be in a relatively... Um, well, not useless, but semi-useless position. He's not able to do very much. Stalingrad's moved up a little bit, I suppose. Probably firing on these guys, but again... Not that able to fire on priority targets. He doesn't have information to fire onto the daring. The clubber's almost dead, so I assume while the D Des Moines radar was running, he did get some shots off. So that's good, I suppose. But he's kind of trapped there. He probably doesn't want to get too close, which is fine. But he's kind of stuck there. Kremlin absolutely can't hit anything right now, so he's not in a position. Uh, he appears to be coming down to try and replace the Kremlin in the southern team. But that's not going to work very well. Now, I guess he could take up basically my position and go bow to bow. But that's about it, and he's taking his guns offline for an extended period of time at this point. It's, it's, yeah, it's 80 seconds. Yeah. Thank you. It's, uh, it's like tier 8. What? No, my nose! <laughs> so you can see here, uh, I took 6,000 in terms of pen. Pen damage from the Kremlin, so... Russian cruisers with the 25mm section are not completely immune, you want to try and bounce the shells. I'm um, semi-under-angled, one could say, and I have my nose basically pointed at them, so he's able to punish me through my nose. My nose! He's, Get he's away! Uh, Commodore, do you have radar? Yes. I adjust my angle hey. accordingly. I do want to try and live for uh, my last no, heal. Not close enough. Like, oh. too, just Nothing to fire upon, so I'm trying to push the... Two uh, you... off the cap. You can see the daring at this point opening fire, and Smolensk is opening fire probably on the Des Moines here. You can, uh, can you come back prayer and contest from this corner? So at this point, I call the daring back. He should have been somewhere out here, I suppose, but since he's down here, I call him back. I want him to contest this corner. So note how, remember when I was talking about positioning the Des Moines, the entirety of their team is on this side. That means that if he just sits here and at least contests the cap, no one can fire upon him. He'll also be much closer to the okay. action. Alright. Like, you're gonna get radar most likely, but just try and take another pen from the Kremlin through the nose. At this point, I'm actually angled, but because I'm so relatively close to him, I'm taking sustained Smolensk pressure. Actually, I'm not even sure that's a Smolensk, I think that's a Daring. I'm just taking sustained high explosive pressure, and I'm taking just pen damage that I can't really mitigate as long as the battleship player aims properly. Do it in a safe position. Who just hit me for 5k? Probably criminal. Nice. Now I should probably be dark. shooting here. Guy, or you're maybe questioning why I wasn't shooting. Even though it's low HP DD. But the point of me not shooting here is to try and disengage. Note that I'm not actually currently detected. I was trying to drop off my gun bloom so I could stop taking high explosive pressure and armor piercing pressure and try and heal out that my last heal. Long. Now my radar does come up, I probably should have popped it here. It's a small mistake. Fully just, disengaged. Just to at least check if the daring is there. Yeah. Pop my heal. Heal back up to 10k, but at this point I'm on the last dregs of my hit points. Kremlin's coming in. Remember where their Kremlin's are, so this is a fairly dangerous angle, so he needs to adjust quite quickly. He does, however, get the chance to fire off a nice salvo into the Moskva if he wants to. Potentially. Oh, I'm respotted. So oh, I get respotted, that means that one of the destroyers is just outside of the smoke. Well, the last destroyer is outside of the smoke and spotting me. So at this point, I'm pretty heavily engaged, and no, my no, angle is not no. quite correct anymore. You'll note that one of their, their Kremlin in the north has extended quite a ways up. There's no one really to stop him. The Des can't fire ahead him. The Stalingrad can't stop him when he's angled like that, and the Wooster is unable to fire upon that position from his current piece of cover behind this rock. Now, this piece of cover is not horrible, but you'll note that Fayer here in the Wooster has beached himself onto the rock and has been there essentially since he got there. So he's been beached for a bit. Probably afraid to reverse out in case something spotted him thanks to the DDs and afraid that he would get fire, fired upon. But based on his position and the fact that he was firing openly from this position, he was probably relatively shielded from most of the team except for maybe the Moskva. But the Moskva is pretty far back at this point having disengaged, taking HE pressure and AP pressure from us. So probably should have corrected, because right now in his current position, he's beached against a rock, and he can't actually uh, leave from this position if they eventually do push up. And you can see here, as the battleships, have, the battleships have been doing so, they've been pushing up a lot. Oh, I'm respotted. 
No Moskva. No Khan. So Kremlin pops up, and that's a pretty much a lethal shot. I'm basically broadside to that Kremlin. All right, he's guilty. Oh no, I'm fine. Oh, I'm not yeah. fine. As you can see, I was <laughs> not fine. <laughs> so my Kremlin is pushing into the cap. So we were at 950 points. Slowly bleeding them out right before I die, but you know, I'm gonna die, so we drop back down to 900, but no problem, you can easily win at 900 points. However, our battleship is continuing forward, and at this point, he's continuing into a soft crossfire of Moskva, Kremlin, Kremlin, and Smolensk. Now, the Kremlin's covered in 16mm plates in certain sections, 32mm nose, however, just like all high tier battleships. So he's tanky, but not invulnerable. Do note also that the Daring is probably still in the vicinity. But so pushing in here is points. essentially the same mistake that U238 made initially. You push too close to the enemy fire for relatively no reason. Like, okay, what can you shoot from here? You can shoot all these guys, right? Well, you can also shoot all these guys from back here. But the angles will be more shallow, which means you get less pens from the Kremlins. You bounce more shells, and it's slightly harder for the small ones to contribute and more importantly you're much much more shielded from the daring now of course you might be thinking i need to block this cap as a player we're kind of falling behind want to potentially block this cap and try and take it but this is a fairly suicidal push could have easily accomplished the same thing by just simply moving the des moines in or as i mentioned earlier by having had the daring come up into here and just contest on this side. Note that none of them still are in a position where they could have fired on the daring at all. So the daring's still wandering out yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. come on, just don't die to yeah, random yeah, daring. Don't don't so don't die to random daring is probably a bit too late already. Oh, he's, he's kind of committed trying. at this point. He has momentum. Oh, okay. We yeah, note that the daring is basically right beside him. Oh, Fortunately for us, he does dodge like the good, torpedoes. Good, good, but oh. dodging torpedoes doesn't really matter when you're under sustained fire from two HE spammers. Two battleships and a heavy cruiser. Okay, yeah, he wasted his torch. But like, is firing on the Mosba, right? trying his best to just launch him. A lot of incoming fires. Fires. Kill the doesn't have the right angle for you that need daring. To kill something for him, otherwise he's gonna die the to the DPM. Yeah. You can finish him a full light. Do note that if we had a daring here as well, which would have been blocking the cap, he could have been firing on this daring, and he probably would have died by now. Yeah, yeah get... this is why you don't Sorry. push all the way in. Oh my. <laughs> so he was at 40k, like what, 10 seconds ago? Yeah. So we're at 13.04. That's a lot yeah, of incoming flight. Oh, yeah, 13.04, he was at 40k, and by 13.22, he's dead. So he died in 16 seconds. This is a tanky ship, by the way. Tanky ship that's relatively okay angled under sustained fire. He died in 14 seconds, or 16 seconds, sorry. I just want you to get that through your head. You make a mistake like that and push over aggressively, you can get punished real fast against coordinated focus fire. Dead there. Oh. And so with his death, we drop down from 900 back down to 873, and they push up. They still have cap control, and at this point, it's pretty over. The Wooster has to stay in cover. They still have two battleships. We have zero battleships, so they can just shove us out. The Des Moines in a position where he can't really fire still. Stalingrad is still at a position where, finally, now he's probably getting some access to broadsides, but he should be focused firing on the... At this point, probably the Smolensk, actually. He has a good angle. Thanks to the Smolensk having positioned in such a way. Where was he? So he's been there for a while. So he was shielded here. Moving out. So you want to probably focus the Stalingrad shells into the Smolensk, since you overmatch his external plating easily. He's bow in, or he's butt in, but open water. Stalingrad should be punishing here. Stalingrad easily punishes the Smolensk, since your shells sail right through his butt due to overmatch properties. It's been there for a while, I don't know why he's still alive. What is the Stalingrad shooting? It's hard for me to say. Des Moines cruisers, that's the Wooster. Can't actually see the Stalingrad's HP, so I don't know if he's under pressure or not. But yeah, the Smolensk should have been shot to pieces by the Stalingrad fairly easily. 2.65 Sigma, coupled with Grash Spade dispersion, coupled with Stalingrad shells means a rough time for any exposed light cruiser like that. Wait. If you can kill the daring, it would, might be kind of okay, as long as Prayer can get in and contest the corner. So he's shooting. Yeah. Although they've, yeah, they've advanced to a point towards... where... Oh, oh, he's given oh, him one pen. He loses Des Moines. So what happens to the Des Moines? Okay, so he's reversing out. He wants to try and get fire onto the daring. Oh, yeah, he's a fucking dog. 
However, okay, that is especially without that legendary module if you can't accelerate very quickly. Uh, you can't even fire you upon the Kremlin yet, so it's definitely okay, not worth you exposing yourself. And the Kremlin better. easily punishes him. He's Although full broadside thanks to his angle, and he gets oh, deleted oh, the game. So at this point, the daring is firing upon the Moskva but kiting away. You probably want to be kiting toward the action at this point. You, the daring ends up being quite high on HP. She has plenty of HP still to trade. And this conservative action moving away from the cap, while it keeps you safe, no one's actually fucking firing back at you, so I don't know why you're playing so cautious. And we need this cap. We need some sort of cap control, so moving away from the cap is definitely really bad. Uh, so overall, over the course of... He's probably in a too conservative position, probably at around 7 minutes. We're at 13 minutes, so he's been too conservative for another 7 minutes, let's just say. So he's been out here for a long time, probably not accomplishing quite as much as he might have been able to. As I mentioned earlier, if he'd gone up here, he could have been pressuring C this whole time. Well, he's yeah. so weak. Look, Mosfa. Oh, no, Prayer should be. You can't finalize. Oh my God. Worcester trying to finalize, finalize so it's pretty lucky, lucky if he lands from these shells. He only needs to land one. Fuck. Thanks uh, to his volume of fire, he does manage what? to pick off the Daring. Oh. Daring is bad. Uh, yeah, no, you might be able to bring it back shot. if you can farm Mosfa. So you yeah, can see here, more... Stalingrad at half health, still pretty healthy. Getting attacked by the Smolensk. Worcester unable to attack back on the Smolensk, so just hammering fire onto the Moskva. That is fine. Daring hammering fire onto the Moskva from quite a ways away. Smolensk is one shot, we'll finish him. Yeah. Nice, Fox, if you can hit the Smolensk. It's all. Oh. Alright. Still firing. Just one, two punch the Moskva and Smolensk. Oh, he healed. Unfortunately, oh. those shells do miss. Oh. Alright, Moskva doesn't hit. Oh, get, get Moskva. Yeah. Fires his back gun. Oh my god. Is this the hashtag no cap kill all? Also fair. Just... However, the shot is whiffed. Which is pretty bad. Shouldn't be missing those shots on the Stalingrad. It's not that far. About 16 kilometers. I'm a little forward. Probably a little more. It's probably actually closer to about 17, 18. But still well within the effective range of the Stalingrad. Smolensk is a pretty small target. Those 36 knots, but he's in the middle of a turn and he can't really go anywhere. So it's a pretty easy shot. So... Whiffing that cell was pretty bad. We do manage, manage to finish off the Moskva, thanks to the Wooster, but however you'll note that because he's stayed beached and afraid to reposition this whole time, or maybe just too focused on shooting things to reposition while doing so, he's about to get crossed in terms of his um, cover by these two Kremlins, which have continued pushing north. He's dead in like 20 seconds. You need to kill Daring has helped to finish off the oh, target, but damn. now is quite yeah. far from doing anything at all. Yep. He has no longer has any DDs to contest him, so he could easily oh contest God. his cap. Holy but shit. Really? Oh, he's too far. How the... he's this is like a random battle map. As you saw, Wooster took a huge cell from oh, the Kremlin. Oh, I should not so he's essentially so dead. Stalingrad quickly burns down. We're at 559. 1440. When did I look at him? So 644, he's at about half. Oh, that is fast. So in the space of 40 seconds, he goes from half to dead, huh? So 35,000 health, that's a lot of health to burn through very quickly. Oh. Alright. Just one, two punch the Moskva and Smolensk. Oh, he healed. Oh. With. Oh, Alright, Moskva doesn't heal. Oh, get, get Moskva. Let me see where the shells are going. Are these guys shooting Moskva's oh putting high God. explosive pressure? No Kremlin's putting all. pressure Moskva onto him. Dead in like 20 seconds. Moskva you dies. Need to kill the Smolensk. Oh, it's not, damn. Smolensk is not even yeah. shooting anymore. Yeah, there's his dump. Oh my God! Holy shit! Really? Ah. Oh, Kremlin damn. chunks the Wooster. He's out. Ah, uh, okay, he's out. So you can see the angle oh, of the Stalingrad oh, compared to the Kremlin. He's pretty fucking close. flat. Oh, so he does burn oh, out, but there's no way a small end that wasn't firing burns you out from half HP at 35,000. So he had to have taken a fair chunk from the Kremlin. So remember when I was still alive earlier, when I took that 23,000 chunk from the Kremlin? From under angling, and that was all pure pen damage, not even citadels? Yeah. That's a positional error. Like he exposed all his guns to try and shoot the small ones. Doesn't end up getting the small ones thanks to some hit points target to shooting error. And, and well, he gets punished by the Kremlin. Oh my god. Yeah. And, us, and at this yeah. point, the game's pretty over. Having and Daring, sure which has been too far to help in most of the action. A little too far. Yeah. 
is no longer able to contribute. Yeah, he so this operate. is not what I would call an epic comeback. This is just called tossing a free game, as you can see, based on my opinion on the post of this upload. But anyhow, from this point on, there's nothing to see. The Daring attempts to contest the cup, but there's no way a Daring can contest the three ships. The game has already been over here, like, yeah. for a fair bit of time. It's yeah, it's exactly. yeah. So my taking the salvo here was a pretty big mistake. I was anchoring down this side since I lost the UT Straits Kremlin early, down to um, down to intense HE pressure, and the Kremlin's coming in to try and replace things. But once Khan dies in the Kremlin over here, it's pretty over. We go from having a shot at squeaking out a win to basically just slowly getting whittled away as we no longer have a southern anchor. So we have. North team versus North team, except their northern team has two battleships and we have zero. So they just slowly push us in and force us out. And this comedy of errors comes to a close. It's in the yeah. Smolensk, and then we. So that is my analysis of this game. Um, if you have any replays from your own perspectives, feel free to post them and take a look at them. I think I have acquitted myself fairly well, though, I'm doing my job as the south side Moskva anchoring ended up absorbing 1.9 million potential and inflicting 100,000 and as you can see there I was very effective on this corner just holding them off so our goal here should have been to just hold them at this position and keep them from pushing however thanks to the over aggression and weird positioning of our heavy ships and perhaps some under aggression from some of our ships on the fringe we end up not being able to contain the hold uh, as well as we should have some under aggression from the Des Moines as well, but probably also some inexperience in terms of where you should be positioning. With the Des Moines, you don't want to be in positions where you absolutely can't fire. You want to be sitting in positions where, at a moment's notice, you can kind of push forward, come out, poke your nose, take some shots, reverse back in, especially if people start ch turning the battleships over to fire upon you. Anyhow, that about sums up what I have to say about this game. So this game was a toss of quite epic proportions, I suppose. And with that, I'm going to wrap this up for now. Cheers.